Conference USA Championship game is set between two new participants when FAU takes on North Texas on December 2nd. We'll preview the game as well as the players to keep an eye on in the conference for the 2018 NFL Draft and beyond. And much more as we go one-on-one -on -one with Patrick McGee, who covers Southern Miss football and the Conference USA for the Sun-Herald in Gulfport, Mississippi, on the OFN Meeting Room with Greg DePom. All right, it's November the 21st, 2017. I'm Greg DePalma. Thanks for tuning in to the OFN Meeting Room as we talk CUSA football with Patrick McGee. Patrick, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. All right, Patrick. So uh, I, I guess right off the bat, i got to ask you, uh, you know, of course, I, I just played the, the Southern Miss fight song. I know they're not in the championship game, but uh, they, they have been in the most championship games in the conference, three appearances with one win. Are you a grad? Uh, yeah, I actually I did go to Southern Miss. I graduated back in 2001. Up in I, I covered Southern Miss really by the time I was in college up to now. So I've awesome. uh, developed a pretty good pretty good knowledge of the program in the last at least last couple of decades. Well, that, that so 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 for, for for anybody out there that's like a, a player that's like that's like playing football for for uh, uh, for I don't know. Uh, let's just say playing football for. Uh, University of Tennessee, and then uh, and then uh, playing football uh, in the state of Tennessee. W would that be correct? That's that's like what you're doing. You just go from college right to the pros, <laughs> staying in the same college. Yeah, yeah, I guess that. Something guess like that. That'd be, that'd be a good way to put it. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, talk about. Well, first of all, North Texas and FAU. Wow. Uh, anytime you get parity like this, it's always good for the sport. And uh, mm -hmm. both teams new uh, to this championship game. Uh, start first of all with North Texas and Seth Latrell doing a fantastic job there. Uh, we know what kind of a program they were under Dan McCarney some years back when when they were the top team in the Sun Belt. Uh, you think that this is now the beginning uh, of us seeing North Texas as a dominant team in this conference? Yeah, well, as long as Latrell's there and, and got the offense going as, as well as it is at the moment, I think they're going to be in the contention for a, a conference championship year in and year out. You know, look at Seth Latrell. He was on Larry Fedora's staff in North Carolina, and I see a lot of similarities between this North Texas team and the, and the type of team that Larry Fedora had at, at Southern Miss. A pretty good stretch. He had four-year stretch at Southern Miss. Uh, Latrell's offense is explosive. Makes him fine. Uh, the quarterback is a perfect guy. Not you know, not your prototypical. He's not even six feet, I don't believe, but he's a good athlete, really good leader, really good passer. Uh, so as long as he's got a quarterback plugged into that system uh, with really good skill players around him, uh, they're going to really score points. You know, much like Larry Fedora do, has done at North Carolina and Southern Miss. So uh, North Texas is a very potent team. A little banged up going into the championship game, but okay. uh, Latrell has done a fantastic job there. Really turning things around in a pretty quick fashion. I mean, it was a di you know pretty different style of football before he got there, so it's pretty impressive how he's really been able to instill his program pretty quickly. Yeah, and matter of fact, North Texas is the second highest scoring team in the conference to FAU, who we'll get to in a minute. Um, uh, but it's not just Mason Fine, as you know. Jeffrey Wilson's having a fantastic season. He's the number two rusher in the conference uh, to uh, Singletary on FAU. But uh, Jeffrey Wilson's got over 1,200 yards rushing and 16 touchdowns. Uh, now, he's a senior, so uh, what do you think about Jeffrey Wilson? Is he somebody that uh, maybe be able – do you think he's probably just a, a, maybe a priority free agent at the best uh, as far as the NFL is concerned? Is this a guy that could make it to the NFL? Uh, I mean, he's. I, I think the the knock on him is he's been injured off and on, and, and he's a question mark for this game, uh, for the championship game as well. So, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's a he's un, I see him as undrafted free agent. I see him as maybe a, a, a you know have that potential of a late round pick. You know how it goes if one team falls in love with a running back, uh, they'll take that you know risk and, and draft you. Uh, but yeah, Wilson, he's a he's always been impressed but as long as he's been healthy. But on the field, he's always produced. And he's had a great season. You kind of hate to see him dealing with a, a foot injury uh, going into the final week of the season. How yeah, Wilson's a, a, a great prospect, a good prospect for for the right system. Are they, are they okay as, if Wilson doesn't play in the game? Uh, what's their situation? What is it? Uh, Nick Smith is their number two. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think they've developed pretty good depth there the last year or two. Like I said, Wilson's been kind of in and out. Yeah. They haven't really had a problem uh, scoring the ball without without Wilson. Uh, so I, I expect them to kind of plug in and go, but uh, it, you know this offense is at its best whenever Wilson is on the field. So 
uh, that's going to be one little one little concern for them going in here in the last weeks too. All right, uh, and uh, taking a look at FAU, and uh, I, I had the uh, uh, I, I was able to uh, interview. Uh, Chuck King, managing editor at FAU Owl Access, a few weeks ago regarding what's going on over there with uh, with Lane Kiffin, who's done a fantastic job there uh, in uh, in just one season. It's uh, been an incredible turnaround. Now the question is, is how long does Lane Kiffin hang around? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I think I see Wayne uh, of Lane hanging around for one more year. Okay. Uh, it's another one of those situations where athletic directors are wanting to see uh, wait and see on Lane. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to jump in right away. Uh, I think they want to see how he matures as a head coach and, and and how he handles his system. It's just been one year. Of course, they're winning on the football football field, but I think a lot of athletic directors want to see how he conducts himself away from the field over the next year or two, and maybe they want to uh, take some time and see how he does in that regard. But, yeah, Lane's going to get a chance somewhere else. He's done a great job. He put together a, a pretty talented staff at FAU, and I think that's played out uh, for the Owls. I think uh, Lane's – Shown a lot this year, but you know, I, I'm I'm not really convinced that he's going to be a one done guy. All right, well, the best player on the team. Do you think uh, that Devin Singletary is the best player in the conference? Well, he, he, you know, it, it, it's hard to make a case against him as the MVP this year. I mean, he's been the the best offensive player on the best offense in the conference. Uh, so yeah, I would say that he's going to be a really serious candidate for for Player of the Year. I can't really think of anybody that would eclipse him. Uh, at this point for, you know, uh, offensive player of the year. So, yeah, I, I think that's the very best. But what he's headed to what, you know, finishing there may, maybe 1,800 yards, maybe as many as 1,900. So he's been outstanding. They built his, their offense around him. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, it's really uh, interesting because you do have, uh, again, FAU's the top-scoring team. North Texas is number two. Both of these teams uh, being the highest-scoring uh, uh, clubs in the Conference USA by over seven points a game to the third ranked highest scoring team so it just shows you how much more offensive output you have from both of these two teams in the championship game uh and of course they've got the best players offensively with singletary as we just mentioned has got 24 rushing touchdowns jeffrey wilson mason fine and such uh as far as the game itself you got fau beating up on north texas uh what was it late october at fau they win the game 69 to 31 so a uh, little bit of revenge in the minds of North Texas, I would imagine. But we don't also know where this game is going to be played yet, right? No, it's going to it's going to be taking place in Boca. Oh, it is. Uh, so that's so North Texas has got to make that trip again. Uh, and with uh, Wilson being uh, banged up and Jalen Guyton uh, is in concussion protocol this week, so uh, it's it's a difficult you know it's a tall mountain for uh, North Texas to climb going back down there, but. I don't expect a 69 to 31 game. I mean, that would just be unusual. You know, North Texas is very much uh, capable of hanging with an FAU talent-wise and and overall. But you know, FAU's been rolling uh, for many weeks now. Uh, North Texas has just had the occasional hiccup, while uh, FAU hasn't lost in a very long time, uh, losing on the road to Buffalo. Which you know, Buffalo was a, a pretty competitive MAC team. That's just a tough sure. trip to make. Uh, lose that game, so I don't really knock Lane. If you look at it, I mean, even Wisconsin and and Navy, they ran those games uh, for the most oh, part. Yeah. So uh, I, you just saw this team really turn the corner once they came out of non-conference and got in the conference play. That offense was just rolling once they kind of found the quarterback they needed and Driscoll and the and, and, and the way Singletary got going. This offense is just hard to stop right now, and I'd, I'd have to make FAU a considerable favorite on its own field in the conference title game. Yeah, and even North Texas uh, had some good losses uh, to uh, SMU and Iowa on the road. So the two best teams are definitely playing each other in the championship game. Uh, talk about the uh, – the so right now, I, I, your article on Friday, uh, you talked about possibly nine teams projected uh, mm -hmm. f f as far as eligibility. Uh, now, you look at it, as of right now today, there are eight. So it looks like with the three teams left, Middle Tennessee, Old Dominion, and uh, Louisiana Tech at five and six – uh, do you think we're still going to get at least nine, or could we get ten or eleven? What do you think based on the games this week? Uh, I think I think we'll have a good chance at, at ten bowl eligible, but you know it's going to be hard for all ten to get in. I mean, they may very well. It just depends on how things shake out. I think they're projecting there's going to be seventy eight spots filled nationally, uh, so you could land anywhere from seventy six or seventy seven to maybe eighty bowl eligible teams. And I could see maybe a Middle Tennessee kind of left out, something like that. 
Uh, but I see nine teams getting bowl bids. Uh, the, the conference has six uh, automatic bids and a conditional uh, tie-in with the Independence Bowl. So, uh, there, And there will be other opportunities, whether it's the uh, uh, Cure Bowl in, in Orlando or the in, you know, Independence Bowl, like I said. And I think Heart of Dallas Bowl might come into the picture as well. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think – I think as many as nine go, and that would that would be far and away a conference record. It's unusual uh, to have as many as ten bowl eligible teams within a fourteen yeah. team uh, conference USA. A great deal of parity, the most parity parity I've really ever seen in the conference. Of course, the bottom three teams are pretty bad, uh, but really the top ten, eleven teams are pretty much on level uh, with the three or four top teams. You know, being really quality, whether it's Southern Miss, North Texas, uh, FAU, and UAB, have all had pretty good seasons. And you have a, uh, I, I guess, a, an elimination game this week with Old Dominion at Middle Tennessee, uh, with both yeah. teams sitting at five and six, uh, with Louisiana Tech getting the home game uh, against uh, Texas San Antonio, who just became bowl eligible last week on a last second field goal. So uh, that make right. that might make things a little bit easier for Louisiana Tech with uh, Texas San Antonio knowing they're already in. Yeah, it takes the pressure uh, off of San Antonio where they had to go in their win. Uh, that was a nice win to beat Marshall last week. Uh, uh, Tech's been really a strange team, but it, you know, I, knowing Skip Holtz, he's going to have his guys ready to go, and I expect yeah. them to find a way to win that ball game. Uh, Middle Tennessee, I think, beats Old Dominion. Middle Tennessee has gotten his quarterback back in stock still, and he's pretty played pretty well in uh, late in the season, so that gives them edge at the quarterback position. Uh, Old Dominion's been stuck with a freshman at quarterback the last few weeks, so I think Middle finds a way to pull it out, but like I said, there's no guarantee of a bowl bid, but it's always good to reach bowl eligibility. All right. Now, uh, let's go through the conference. And uh, uh, last year, uh, Western Kentucky, I mean, wow, uh, it's it's amazing how things change when, 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 when your coach leaves. Uh, and, and Brom has done just an incredible job already with Purdue. Uh, we know what he did at Western Kentucky, so that's looking like a great hire at Purdue. Mike Sanford takes over, uh, doesn't have the experience, uh, young guy. Uh, and they've had their difficulties this year, even with Mike White coming back as a senior. And I do believe that Mike White is one of the top uh, prospects at our lads uh, for seniors coming out. White is the number five senior quarterback prospect. Uh, the top one is Will Hernandez. We'll get to him in a little bit. But, um, yeah, um, with Mike White there, you know, you still would have thought, okay, where's Kentucky? Probably, you know, be up there uh, contending for another championship. But, uh, boy, right off the bat, they, they just struggled. Are you surprised how much they struggled this season? Yeah, I thought they would be better. You know, I expected a slight step back just because you've got that transition to a new staff, and I'm sure there were, you know, fairly significant changes that, that went into the system, but I am surprised. Uh, White's had a pretty good year. I don't think there's really any reason to doubt him as far as a prospect uh, coming off this season, but the team overall has underachieved. Uh, you know, they're sitting here at 6-5, six and six and five and, and they're going to want to get to that seventh to, to kind of improve their uh, situation as far as the ball goes, but Western Kentucky, you know, overall, again, is one of the more talented teams in the conference. And they have a quarterback in, in a senior year to just not really be able to compete there in the East is a surprise uh, for FAU to kind of leap them. And, and, and now you get Western Kentucky playing FIU this week, and that's no guarantee. Uh, so, yeah, West Kentucky has kind of taken a step back this year, and I think maybe we saw that at Southern Miss last year uh, with Jay Hobson coming in his first season as head coach, just, a, you know, an adjustment period to a new staff. So, I guess maybe you can just kind of talk it up to to a young coach uh, coming in, kind of feeling his way in his first year. Uh, you've had an opportunity to see uh, Mike White at all, uh, you know, the last couple of years. I know that uh, now Southern Miss hasn't played them uh, the last couple of years, mm-hmm. have they? Yeah, I have. I've seen him, you know, just what I've seen on TV. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of the prototypical. I mean, he just really fits the the bill. You know, it's out. He's a transfer coming out of South Florida. And uh, he just plugged right into Brom's system and, and was perfect. Uh, so, yeah, White, you know, 6'5", uh, really good arm, uh, good leader, throws is pretty darn ha- accurate. I'd say he's maybe a little bit more accurate uh, than Do- Doty was who's now with the Dolphins. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I, I like White a lot. I think he's somebody that's going to find a spot somewhere. All right. Uh, another team uh, that uh, you just mentioned, uh, Middle Tennessee State, and uh, maybe we weren't surprised about the outcome last week with Stockstill back uh, that these two teams mm-hmm. put up a ton of points and the game went to overtime. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what happens. Right. So how's Stockstill? He's, he's better, which is good for the good for the team. Good for him. Good for the conference. 
Yeah, I think there's a lot of impatience up at Middle Tennessee right now uh, for them to be, you know, not bowl eligible going into the final week. I think sure. his dad, who's the head coach, I think there's really uncertainty about his future going forward. Okay. I think uh, a lot of uh, fans have kind of grown to take him for granted and what he's been able to do there. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this, you know, goes forward with uh, Stock still, I believe, still got another year. His son's got another year uh, of eligibility. And, and his head, head, you know, dad's the head coach. That, yeah. That's going to be really interesting. But Stockfield's, a, you know, he's a good quarterback. I mean, whenever he's in, they put up crazy numbers. And they've also been without uh, Richie James, their star receiver. Yeah. Uh, so it's been kind of a difficult year for middle. I mean, early on, they beat uh, Syracuse. Uh, Stock still gets hurt in that game. And, and things just kind of took a turn south. Uh, when you don't have Stock still and Richie James on the field at the same right. time, of course, you're going to be not going to be able to produce as much. So, yeah, I think. I think folks are getting restless in Murfreesboro and, and just the attendance that's shown it. And what about also uh, another coach that's been around for a while at Marshall is Doc Holliday. Uh, he's done a great mm-hmm. job uh, with that program. And uh, maybe, again, maybe a situation where uh, they had uh, may- maybe some better aspirations, especially with uh, things not going well with the injuries to Middle Tennessee and the coaching change to Western Kentucky. And uh, actually, you kind of looked at Marshall, at, I mean, early on this season, uh, and actually for, for most of the season, up until that FIU game, you know, you thought things were going pretty good because they only had that one loss, which was a good loss at North Carolina State. But then that FIU game, that loss there, and then all of a sudden you lose back to back. You lose three out of four, and the season uh, really changed uh, over the past month. Yeah, and I think the the early uh, record for Marshall might have been a little deceiving. I mean, they played well, uh, but the schedule was somewhat soft. They beat a, a you know a Cincinnati team that's really had a, a rough season uh, there in their Luke Fickle. So it's I, I think Marshall just kind of hit a wall a couple of weeks ago against FIU. And you saw them only, what, they only had seven points at San Antonio yeah. uh, last week. So Marshall is just kind of in a, in a, going on a bad trend. Uh, I like Southern Miss to go up there and beat them this Saturday. Southern Miss's offense has, has played really well since Quadre Griggs, a return at quarterback after missing time with the injury. Uh, they scored 66 in Charlotte. And at Rice, they, you know, I don't think they ever punted at Rice. So the offense for Southern Miss is going really well. And I think, I think Southern Miss has a good chance to go up there and and get a big win on the road at Marshall. It's just a team that really, I'm not sure what the answer is. It's not really like the injuries have been bad. Litton's still at quarterback. And, and all this is just, I don't know, it's just, they just kind of seem to be running out of steam at the moment. Uh, let's talk about uh, ODU because they've got a couple of senior prospects to keep an eye on for the NFL draft. Running back Ray Lowry and uh, mm-hmm. Boonmi uh, Rotimi. Uh, the defensive end, uh, who's ranked 11th uh, at our lads, is a senior defensive end. Now, I know both guys have had to deal with injuries uh, this mm-hmm. season, uh, but Laurie, I mean, he's been very productive for four seasons uh, throughout the injuries, of course. Uh, that's going to happen. But uh, what do you think about uh, those players, or what do you think about Laurie especially? Well, uh, Lowry is somebody I think I've seen play a lot, uh, be a film, you know, TV or whatever, and he's he seems to kind of fit the mold of what you want. Really good size, uh, has good pop, good you know, good size. Really kind of good uh, uh, center of gravity to him. I, I like him a lot as a, as a potential next level guy in play there. I think he'd probably be a free agent pickup. Uh, just like you said, point out the injury aspect. He's been dealing with that this year. So I think Lowry definitely gets a look, but I can't see him being drafted. Uh, I would you know, as far as guys getting drafted, if there is anybody on the board that's uh, has to be on any NFL GM's uh, uh, radar. Is that Jalen Ferguson, the defensive end at Louisiana Tech? Okay. Uh, you know, six six five two sixty nine. Uh, to me, if if there's one you know prospect in Conference USA that that really has a chance to shoot up the board, it's him there at Louisiana Tech. All right, so that's a guy who's a junior to keep an eye on. Uh, first <clears throat> team last year. Uh, you guess he'll, he'll be another first teamer this year? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's. Uh, Louisiana Tech is, is underachieved to a degree, but you have to game plan around him and, and, and you know put two guys on him at all times. Uh, he's just you know he's just he just looks like an NFL guy. If you see him in person, you're just really impressed. Uh, he's played very well at Louisiana Tech. He came in you know out of high school as a well-regarded prospect and in up Tech, and he hasn't disappointed one bit. I think Jalen Ferguson Jalen Ferguson's got a very bright future. All right. Uh, we'll keep an eye on him then for sure. Uh, and another player that they have is uh, number eighth rated uh, free safety, Cedric uh, Cooper. Uh, so uh, now he's a senior, so he'll be coming out. So 
Uh, we'll keep an eye on him. Uh, the top guy, though, uh, for the conference is Will Hernandez out of UTEP. Now, this hasn't been a great uh, season, of course, for UTEP, uh, but they lost Aaron Jones, who, you know, uh, matter of fact, he was one of my uh, w- one of my sleepers uh, to keep an eye on uh, this season because I, I, I knew how well uh, he played at UTEP over the last several years and figured, uh, okay, maybe later on down the road, he could be somebody to keep an eye on. Then he gets his shot and then he plays fantastic before the injury. But that just shows you how valuable he was to Sean Kugler's team. And Kugler being an offensive line coach, maybe it's not a surprise that Will Hernandez uh, is the top rated prospect in this conference at, at offensive guard. Um, uh, and I know it's a very tough position to, to analyze on the offensive line, but, uh, but look, Kugler, uh, I know they, they haven't had a very successful season, but, uh, you know, considering this is his, uh, this is his alma mater. Uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't think that he'd be in trouble. Do you? No, uh, Kugler. Yeah. Uh, no, he's already fired. Oh, he uh, did. I didn't even realize yeah, he was fired. When did yeah, he get fired? Yeah, yeah. Mike Price has been interim coach. Uh, Mike like Price came season. back. When did this happen? Yes, Mike Price. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think we were four to five weeks in. Wow, I didn't even uh, know that. Price is taking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, offensive linemen who play under Kugler, I mean, they're just massive. I mean, if 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 Kugler thinks he can play offensive line, UTEP's a good place to go. Uh, so yeah, you know, I I don't know much about Fernandez, but. All I all I gotta know is I gotta look at the UTEP offensive line. I, every one of them was just huge, uh, and they struggled this year along the line. I, I can't, so I can't really grade them out much. Oh sure, I get other. that. Yeah. Uh, the the one game I saw at UTEP did play at Southern Miss this year, and the Southern Miss defensive line really dominated uh, that game. It really wasn't much of a game at all. Uh, but Kugler is a you know former Steelers offensive line coach, and somebody who can develop offensive line. And it wouldn't surprise me one bit that you know one of his guys came out and played in the NFL. Is that the only job right now uh, as a, uh, that is uh, available uh, in the conference, uh, the UTEP job? And as you said, maybe there might be another couple? Uh, yeah, I, 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 there's some to kind of watch in the coming weeks. Uh, you know, uh, David Bailiff at Rice, uh, he's been there a while, but, you know, things were – he realized he kind of had to win this year, and they're letting him hang in throughout the year. But okay. Left, you know, Bailiff's a good coach. Yeah, he's done a good job it, there, it, yeah. It just hasn't worked out for them. They've only won one game uh, this season. And one that, that, that maybe you have to keep an eye on is that Charlotte Brad Lambert, he's in year number five. Uh, they kind of, you know, for a little bit, you know, they're, they're, they were in that transition to FBS level while he was there, first two to three years. Uh, and they were, you know, surprisingly competitive at times last year, but it's really fallen off this year. Uh, only one win for Charlotte. It was a good win over UAB, but uh, you just have to kind of wonder uh, what's in the future for Charlotte. Uh, they lost 66 to 21 to Southern Miss last week. It really wasn't a contest. Uh, so yeah, I, I, they lost to North Carolina A&T early in the season. So if you're Charlotte, you're kind of wondering. Is Lambert the right guy for the future? Do they need to go ahead and make a change and get somebody in there a little younger, a little more energy for a, a program that's still trying to find its way and still in very early stages there at Charlotte? So I think those are two spots that probably have to you have to watch closely. All right, and uh, how's everything going on at Southern Miss, uh, the program that you're covering? Uh, I think Staggers, the receiver, is the top-rated uh, player from uh, the program that I saw at our lads as far as uh, – uh, uh, senior receivers that are coming out. Uh, you take a look uh-huh. at this team. Uh, who else should we be keeping an eye on, and what about Staggers? Actually, it's another receiver I think that's really come onto the team this year, Corey Robertson. Uh, I think he's got a chance to be first-team all-conference. He's he's drawn c- close to 1,000 yards. Uh, he's, if you see him in person, I mean, he's just a beast. He's uh, 6'3", 6'4", uh, 210, 215 pounds, and he's just violent. Uh, with the ball in his hands, he's, you know, defenders, he, it's hard to get two guys on him to bring him down. And he's got good speed. You know, I don't think he's going to show up at a combine and, and run a true 4-5 or something like that. But he's, you know, 4-6. He probably tops out at 4-5-5, five, five, something like that. Okay. Uh, great hands. Uh, he just really kind of took off this year. Uh, Staggers has had a decent year, but he's had to kind of take a, uh, a step back and kind of let Robertson go because, I mean, he's just been outstanding. Yeah, and last year. as far as the other pro- – no, I was going to oh, say yeah. last year Staggers was the thousand yard receiver on the team, uh, and so. Uh, but this is what happens in college. This, you never know when, when when these kids are going to blossom. So Robertson has obviously uh, been the man. He's uh, what sixty five receptions compared to thirty nine for Staggers and almost a thousand yards and ten touchdowns. Uh, you, you, who else yeah. are you going to say? 
Yeah, well, uh, they, it was a change. Of, you know, Nick Mullins a year ago just kind of built that chemistry with Staggers. With Staggers, and okay. Quadri Briggs and Keon Howard. So it's a, Got it. a different deal where he's just kind of worked in better with the uh, new quarterbacks. And uh, overall, I think Corey Robertson has to be uh, looked at. And also safety, Tavarius Moore. I think he's got a chance to be a draft pick. Uh, he's 6'2", 190, uh, has all the measurables, has had a very good senior year. So I think uh, Tavarius Moore is somebody that's a senior coming out. I think he's got the best chance of being drafted. All right. Sounds good. And uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on him as well. Uh, and uh, you take a look. There's a, a couple other players that are doing well in the conference. Uh, uh, you've got uh, Davenport with, with Texas San Antonio and Womack with Rice. Right. Uh, so those guys leading uh, the conference in sacks and tackles for loss. Uh, boy, FAU's got a lot of guys uh, intercepting passes. Jalen Young, Shelton Lewis, and Chris <clears throat> Tooley, they've combined for 13 interceptions. That's a lot of interceptions for three guys. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned Davenport. Davenport, another guy that's really uh, just huge. I think he's, what, 6'7", six, 6'8", six, uh, as a defenseman. He's really been outstanding. He's got a bright future ahead of him, too. I think he's a definite draft pick. Uh, but, yeah, FAU secondary, I think FAU defensively, that's maybe the most surprising aspect, is that they've had been pretty good this year. They were pretty woeful the last couple of seasons for them to uh, be opportunistic, and that's what it takes whenever you have an offense like that. You don't necessarily have to slow teams down. You just have to figure out a way to uh, turn the other team over. So, yeah, FAU is all the way around. Is They're always going to have talent just because they're located in Florida, and, and sure. Lee Kiffin and that staff has managed to put it together and make them a very good team right away. So you think uh, Lane Kiffin is going to stay another year? Yeah, I mean that's kind of my opinion. Okay. Uh, I mean I don't see any I don't see any perfect fits for Lane Kiffin this time around. Uh, you know maybe after two years I think he makes you know makes that jump back to a larger program. Uh, but I, like I said, I think AD still want to wait and see on Kiffin. Uh, one year is great, but they want to see two to three years and how he handles himself. I think the maturity is just one thing that ADs uh, want to keep an eye on and how he. Uh, leads that program, and so far he's done a very good job. But uh, one year is still still pretty quick. I, I think they have to give him another year at, at FAU. And what do you think about Butch? Uh, not the success, of course, that uh, Kiffin's had, but still, I mean, things have gone pretty good uh, so far this season for FIU. Uh, just overshadowed mm-hmm. by everything that Kiffin's done, of course. But six and four, being bowl eligible, there's nothing wrong with that, considering that this team hasn't been bowl eligible for quite a while. Yeah, I mean, you could argue that Butch has done the best. Better job of, of doing a turnaround because that FA, you know, if if you saw FAU the last couple of years, you knew they had players. Yeah, it just wasn't coming together for him. And FIU you just kind of wondered uh, how they were ever going to make it work. Uh, he has the benefit of having a, a veteran quarterback and in McGo and a, and a good receiving core. It's you know he he had some pieces there at FIU, but not much. Uh, so Butch Davis has done a very good job there. Uh, I think I think it was a good hire. You were kind of wondering if maybe he was kind of. Uh, uh, you know, on his last leg as a sure. coach, but he's gone, come in there and shown a lot of energy and, and made that team far better than any of us could have expected. I'm not as, you know, I'm, I'm more surprised about FIU than I am FAU, honestly. Now, before I let you go, I can't let you go without bringing up uh, UAB. I had Steve Irvine on a few weeks ago, color analyst for UAB football, uh, writer for Blazers 247, and we talked about just what an incredible job Bill Clark has done first year back at FBS for UAB. Nobody could have imagined the season that F- that UAB is having. Seven wins. They've got UTEP home. That's going to be eight wins. Uh, nobody would have thought that. Right. And that's, I mean, this team, they've only been to one bowl in the history of the program, and they're going to a bowl the first year for uh, being in an FB. I mean, are they eligible? Are they eligible? They're okay, right? There's no reason for them not to. Yeah, yeah, they're in. Okay. Uh, they'll get a, uh, they'll, they'll go. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I mean, that's an outstanding. I mean, you can make a strong case that he's the national coach of the year. Yeah. Uh, for what he's been able to do there. I, you know, and just seeing the players that he was bringing in uh, from the JUCO level and other ranks, I knew they would be competitive. Uh, you know, I thought they could be a team that could go in and win four or five games this year. But to get up to, to eight wins like he will this Saturday, it's been pretty pretty impressive. Uh, they came in and really put it on a, a pretty good Southern Miss team a few weeks ago, 30-12. to 12. Uh, So it's uh, Bill Clark is outstanding coach. I've had the chance to interview him and talk with him before. And, uh, the more you're around him, the more you're impressed with him. He's a, he's, he's the guy I think that you know major programs have to look at. Uh, uh, you know whether it's Ole Miss or somebody like that, they have to seriously consider Bill Clark because he's shown he can coach football. 
and he can recruit. Yeah. And uh, he's he's a quality, you know, a, a good character guy. Uh, you can't go wrong with him. So I think Bill Clark has got a very bright future, relatively young still. So uh, Bill Clark is going to be uh, he's he's going to be somewhere and win a lot of football games one day. I mean, would it be too crazy to think about a, a job opening like Florida, considering he's a Jacksonville State guy? I mean, is, is that just yeah. going a little bit too over? Uh, I mean, I mean, we've seen crazier things with coaching candidates. You know, who, who's this guy? I mean, I don't think a lot of people really even knew who Urban Meyer was, to tell you the truth. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I can't. I, I don't think you can go wrong with Iron Bill Clark. I, I know he's maybe not the sexy name in a place like Florida or Tennessee or some of these other places, but uh, you know, I, I, you know, I yeah, if things fall right, I think he could get very serious consideration in a large program like Tennessee or Florida. Uh, but I, I don't think so. I think Florida and Tennessee are so hungry and desperate that they'll just throw the money, you know, at whoever they think is going to win immediately. And I don't know if Bill's necessarily the guy that comes in year one and just makes him a national contender. Uh, but within two to three years, they're going to be playing for conference championships. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I, they would be wise to consider him. But at the end of the <laughs> day, I think they'll probably try to go uh, aim a little higher. Yeah, yeah, we know how these big schools are. It's uh, probably very hard to sell it. Uh, you get, boy, you get to, to, to ads have to have a lot of guts uh, to make a move like that. Uh, but um, and and they have to be they have to be right, or else they lose their job over it. Uh, but right. then again, you know, we've seen a lot of these big name coaches uh, get these positions, get these opportunities, and it just doesn't work out anyway. By the way, I was talking uh, uh, the other day uh, about. Uh, about the possibility uh, that Lane Kiffin could you could you see and now this is if if Kiffin left and 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 let's just say you know he he leaves the program could you actually see Tennessee bringing him back? No, no, no. I mean, there's just no way. I mean, I I I, I haven't forgotten what happened where he left. Uh-huh. They were burning things in Knoxville. I mean, why? You know, I just I cannot see that happening. I just you know, it's fun to talk about, and, you know, considering the prospects, maybe he would be one of the better options, but I, I just don't see how, <laughs> how he could go back to Tennessee. It was, he was so hated up there. I mean, they really dislike Butch Jones, but uh, their level of hatred for Lane Kiffin <laughs> yeah. back then was, was off the chart. So, no, I, I just don't see how that happens. There's too many people up there that haven't forgiven him to this day. Yeah, I mean, I had a, a, one of our guest writers on the other day, and he, and he threw out the possibility of uh, you never know. Uh, they're so desperate for winning. Some of them have already forgiven him. But, uh, yeah, I figured it sounded like a crazy idea. Uh, and, and I know, of course, you you know these guys uh, covering them all year. And, uh, I mean, what, what you said sounds sounds reasonable, uh, that that Kiffin needs uh, he needs some time. Uh, you right. s- you see one year sometimes, and I I was surprised that Sarkeesian got the job uh, as quickly as he did, especially from one from Alabama to the NFL. I mean, so fast, and 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 he's had just had some personal problems. Like I get that, but but you know, and sometimes you got to give these guys some time, or or, or at least you think they sh- they need the time themselves to get their life straightened out. Mm-hmm. So. Right, and with Lane, I think he needs you know a little bit of time at FAU. I, he, he needs to be humbled, and I think he's already had some of that. But uh, he needs to kind of settle in and, and, and figure out what kind of a head coach he wants to be. Uh, but just because he's just moved around so much from from job to job, uh, he's never really been able to kind of develop his you know uh, uh, you know develop the ground level you know what he wants to do as a program. He's just moved around so much. So I think he's still got some learning to do as a head coach. Patrick, great job. Thanks a lot. Uh, you're going to have a, uh, I'm assuming you, you're going to be working uh, on a, a championship game preview, bowl previews, things of that nature with the paper? Yeah, well, uh, just over the next week, I'll be keeping an eye on the uh, uh, bowl situation and, and looking ahead to the last weeks and how things might shake out. I, think, I don't think bowls will be totally settled until after the uh, championship game. Maybe we'll find out the, about the Bahamas Bowl this weekend and everything else. So the postseason picture still got a lot of things to figure out, especially when you get essentially nine bowl teams. So uh, there's going to be a lot to be kind of learned over the next two weeks. All right, Patrick. Well, maybe we can uh, talk to you again before the bowl season starts uh, or at least later on down the road. Either way, I appreciate your time, uh, and we'll talk to you again some other time. Uh, Thanks a lot. All right. Thanks for having me. All right. You got it. That is Patrick McGee. And, again, Patrick covers Southern Miss and Conference USA for the Sun Herald and Gulfport, Mississippi, Southern Miss grad. Uh, So there you go.
Uh, that's uh, but the other day we actually what was it? Well, the other day it's Monday. It was yesterday. It's, see, I mean, my my life just spirals. Uh, which is the whole reason I didn't even know Mike Price had taken over interim at UTEP. Uh, but that's also what happens. And see, this is by the way th that is a perfect example of why I, I said this yesterday, and why I say this a lot when I when I like to cover uh, these conferences and these teams because. It, you don't get this information. It's not readily available. You've got to dig for it. I mean, this is an FBS football coach. To me, if any FBS football coach gets fired, and I know there's a lot of positions, but I mean, come on, it's not, it's, I'm not talking about Division One college basketball. And even if I was, I would be saying the same thing, to tell you the truth, even as over, what, 300, 350, 360 Division One college basketball teams? I say the same thing. If I'm doing a weekly college basketball show, and somebody gets fired, and they're like uh, the 311th ranked team in college basketball, and they fire their head coach, I I'm sorry, but at some point, and I'm not doing it with five seconds left in the show, at some point I'm mentioning it. I'm letting it – I might even do it at the open. It's, I mean, I, I just think these, just, these things are important. I, I, look, I said this, and I'll keep saying it, just because you're – you know, not everybody goes to Alabama. Not everybody goes to Ohio State, Michigan, Auburn, all these programs. Uh, they don't have kids going there. I understand the allegiances there. I understand the popularity there. I completely get all of that. Um, but there are a lot of people that go to Conference USA schools. There are a lot of people that go to Sunbelt schools and follow these programs. And, you know, you should make it hard on them. You know, it's bad enough, and and I and I understand it. I mean, nobody's saying that you should put Conference USA games like on CBS in the afternoons, and not SEC games. So I I get all of that, uh, but do we really have to kind of hide the news regarding what's going on with the rest of these teams? Because when we talk about the draft, uh, and we'll be talking, we talk about the draft all the time on our lads. So when we talk about, especially when we get closer in the off season, and then we really start going and digging into these players, you know, just like I said here with Will Hernandez, Will Hernandez, okay. As now, this of course could change, but Will Hernandez, the number one senior rated offensive guard in the NFL draft for our lads, okay, and he's playing at UTEP, so. Th th that that's talent th th that's that's significant so so give the proper respect to these schools give the proper respect to the fans who want to follow the schools and you know when i'm like spending uh, uh whatever all the all the different hours a day doing all the different things that i have to do for my network uh, for my two networks, and and obviously, for, for more importantly, in football season, not only for college football, but the NFL, uh, and everything that that entails, and also getting ready early as as often, I mean, early as possible for the draft. Why do you think I put these interviews together? Uh, it, it's it's for, for us. That it, it, Me, I'm a fan. So I want to know this stuff. Uh, and, and that's why, uh, that's why it's important that's why it's important for me. I love to do it and I love to provide it. And I hope that in time, you know, this was our first year doing this. We're not done yet. First season doing this, but in time uh, and with this, with, with the, our lads uh, affiliation in time, what we're trying to build here is, is enough of a rapport with these writers and analysts that come on this show, uh, on this network give us their time for their, for their respective teams and their conferences, uh, and that we could develop these long-lasting relationships. And this will make it a lot easier for you as a fan to know that if I really want to know what's going on, you know, if the national media wants to forget and, and kind of, you know, brush aside, uh, you know, Kugler getting fired or, or, uh, or, or so-and-so getting hurt uh, and, he, and, he's, and he's out for a month, uh, or so-and-so being suspended, uh, things that, oh, I mean, where am I going to, especially for college, okay, because it's much different than the NFL. I mean, anything happens in the NFL, even even the 32nd ranked uh, coach gets fired, uh, you're going to hear about it. Uh, so I get that. But in college especially, man, it, it is so hard 
to, to, to get the information. Why do you think, I mean, people love now coming over to our lads for the college football depth charts. Why? Because the information is valid. The information is at your fingertips. You could take a look at the depth charts before the games. You know exactly what the depth charts look like uh, for the teams before the games, uh, all that kind of information. That's the kind of information and the kind of people that you know that you can trust. Okay. And not everybody has an answer. I don't have the answers, and that's the reason I try to bring on guys, uh, people who do have the answers, uh, like Patrick, to the network. And uh, these are the type of relationships we want to we want to continue to build, just like we did yesterday when we were talking uh, Mac football with John Wagner uh, covering the Toledo Blade. So uh, I know that I've had some interviews already. Uh, talking about uh, some uh, a a AAC teams. I'm going to try to see if I can get Mark Daniels back on uh, at some point. Not sure if I can get him on on Friday, uh, but that's something that I'm definitely going to look forward to doing. Same thing with with uh, with if South Florida say uh, wins the football game, but uh, hopefully I'll get Mark Daniels on. Not sure we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do it for this week. Try to get him on this week with the holidays. And and besides, keep in mind that's not a comp that's not a championship game, South Florida and Central Florida. But the following week when Memphis takes on Central Florida, and dig into what's going on in the AAC as well. So uh, we'll get to the Sun Belt in the next couple of weeks because they still have a few weeks to go to kind of figure things out. Uh, it's not the same with uh, splits, you know, split divisions and championship games and all that kind of stuff. But hey, there are players. Uh, look at it. Just talked about Aaron Jones. I mean, that see, I mean, when I put Aaron Jones in my sleeper uh, uh, report at the beginning of the season, uh, and, and and mentioned him on our draft show with Dan Chanka last year, uh, and 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 look, he he becomes relevant, and and not a lot of people know. Who, know who he is like the average football fan forget about like nfl guys or fantasy football owners that don't pay attention a whole lot to college unless these kids get drafted high have a great camp uh something newsworthy that they can read about them but when an aaron jones is just oh yeah he's a fifth round draft pick and he's third on the depth chart and he went to utah nobody pays attention to that stuff most people don't and 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 that's what we pride ourselves here at our lads uh, with. Uh, and it's not just Dan. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other people that are working for uh, our lads. Uh, they do a lot of the work. There's a lot of great scouts that Dan relies on. Uh, they do a great job feeding in the information. Of course, Dan does his great job. Uh, and then I, I do my part to try to bring in as many people as well that can uh, feed in some of this information. Just like you heard today. Uh, from Patrick talking about some of these players that might not even be on the radar. They may not be the player uh, that you're necessarily thinking about. You know, you come into the season, Staggers uh, is uh, coming up a thousand yard season. He's a senior. He's a guy to keep an eye on. Well, hey, we, we got to keep an eye on Corey Robertson. Now, he may not come out of come out this season, but maybe he does. We got to keep an eye on him. And, it, and it's great to get Patrick's perspective on that. So, you know, OK, because if we would if we did this last season, I would have been talking about Aaron Jones on this program. I would have I would have probably. And if I would have had Patrick McGee on, we, 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 you know, that would have been one of the big topics of the show that we would have just been talking about. And then you would have known way in advance about Aaron Jones. Not that you didn't if you were listening to our draft shows. And then, of course, read the report before the season began. But you get the point. OK, so uh, great uh, job by Patrick. Uh, we are going to uh, have more programming uh, later on in the week, uh, especially you want to be keeping an eye on the programming for the NFL and college football. Tomorrow we'll have our college football uh, week 13 preview. And then on Friday, we're going to have our NFL week 12 preview with Tony Me. Uh, and uh, just stay tuned. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Prime SM. Remember, we have our meeting room interviews because they can pop up anywhere. Uh, and then we'll send it out on demand at Prime SM to let you know when they are going to be available so you can check them out. Uh, so that'll do it here for the OFN meeting room on the r Lads Football Radio Network. Uh, we'll see you again sometime real soon. Uh, we'll definitely see you tomorrow for the College Football Preview Show and then on Friday for NFL Preview uh, with Tony Media. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.